Uh, good afternoon. I'm Pauline Osse. I work for Wage Indicator Foundation and uh, today we started together with CCO, with Commissioners uh, Obredas, FNV, the trade union in the Netherlands, and the trade union from Hungary, together a new project to, in two years' time to close the gender pay gap. We do that in 29 countries in uh, Europe. Um, the project is about research done by the University of Amsterdam. Um, it's about uh, information. In all 29 uh, wage indicator websites in Europe, we will have information about what is the gender pay gap, how can you solve it, what is the role of the trade unions, uh, etc. And next to that, and that's the most important part of this project, <coughs> we go with the trade unions uh, all over Europe, um, find out what are the best collective agreements to reduce the gender pay gap. Therefore, we have debates, for instance, in Madrid or in Barcelona, um, together with women, men who do the negotiations for collective agreements, uh, to find out what is the best collective agreement to close the gender pay gap. Thank you. We work in 80 countries. In all these countries around the world, we found out uh, that women earn less than men. And that is basically what you call a gender pay gap. A gender pay gap means uh, very often that um, you see in countries that men uh, are in different sectors, in different occupations, uh, on higher positions in the companies. They work in <coughs> bigger companies. That all together makes that men very often earn more than women. You say they earn more per hour than women. Logic. Women very often get a baby. As soon as they have a baby, they stop working a bit or they work less, which means they earn less, but also they have less options to, uh, to do a promotion. The in most interesting is actually when women are very high educated, that they still have a pay gap uh, compared to very high educated men. And that makes it sad. It's difficult to close the gap. In short, how does it come, the gender pay gap? It's because of different sectors, different occupations, and sometimes different education. Uh, women have smaller amount of hours uh, in the week that they work, and that together makes the pay gap. Of course, there is, uh, there is discrimination, but to say where exactly the discrimination is, is difficult. We try to combat the gender pay gap. We uh, present a lot of information and research about the gender pay gap. And the gender pay gap is very, in very short, it means that men earn more than women per hour. Fair or unfair? I think it's unfair. And that's why we do research on how can you make the gender pay gap smaller. So how can you make sure that women earn uh, more, um, at least more, and of course, more than man would be much better. And uh, how can you do that? Well, uh, think about your daughter and how do you give advice to her? You might say, think about uh, the sector in which you're going to work um, and uh, think about the occupation you will uh, have. So if you have an oc occupation with more education, it will bring in a bit more money. And so it's uh, the choice for the sector, the choice for the occupation. Later, uh, you can discuss with your daughter and say it's maybe smart when you start working uh, to try to keep on working as much as possible and not to stop. Because when you stop, not for a month, that's no problem, but if you stop for years, it's very difficult to come back in the same occupation on the same level, which means your education, which you have, um, well, it's all of a sudden a bit useless uh, for the labor market, not for yourself or your family, but for the labor market. So if you still think, well, how to close the gap? Sector, occupation, education level. Don't stop for a while while you're in your career um, and keep on doing your education on different levels. These are the items to make sure that there is a less bigger gap. And of course, as a woman, you can't do it yourself, you can't do it only for your daughter. The best thing is to join a trade union and to do it together. And we give tips and tricks how to close the gap. 
we give tips for women, for their daughters, uh, but of course also for trade unions because it's not only an individual issue, uh, it's a challenge for the whole trade union movement how to make sure that women at least earn as much as men or that they earn more than men. How can you do it? The, basically, the most effective way for a trade union is to have good collective agreements. That's the goal of the trade unions. What should be um, uh, written in uh, such a uh, collective agreement? You try to have flexible hours. The next step is in in the collective agreements, try to have a career path for women. Um, also for men, of course, but we focus now on women. If you have a better career path, let's say each year a bit of education allows you to have a bit more uh, money in a new uh, level in your collective agreement, helps to uh, have women on a bit, bit, bit higher level in, um, in, the, uh, in the payroll system. That is better than having it flat or everybody on a, on a minimum wage, which is very often the case for women. They are on minimum wages and men make career. So for women, especially in sectors where women are working, that could be healthcare or that could be retail, try to have a collective agreement with uh, simple steps for education. That, uh, that helps. For the rest, in uh, not only the collective agreement but also in relation to the HR department it would be good that the trade union talks to the HR department of the companies and say focus on women as such that they can make simple uh, career in the companies more than men. In the end for a company it's much better to have women and men on top positions or better on all positions. Focus for the trade union on the government is to talk with the government Again, about flexibility, again, about childcare uh, um, arrangements, again, about arrangements to take care for people around you, to make sure that you still can work many hours, even when um, you uh, have to take care for people, because when you work more hours, you earn more. These arrangements is part of what a, a government can facilitate. Obviously, when uh, a new baby is born, and there should be a reasonable good arrangement for maternity leave. And there should be a good arrangement as such that the father or the partner also can take care for the child. Because when they learn uh, from the first day uh, that taking care for kids is also a lovely job, uh, it's easier for women and for men to share, um, not the burden, but to share the, the joy of caring for others, but work in the same time and earn money and have a pension later. Thank you.